Thank you, Mary. We are both going to be making opening presentations to kind of establish uh, where we're coming from. Uh, and I had a very busy day going around with lots of people, having talks with people, and the subject repeatedly came up that uh, everybody's complaining that the young people on Occupy Wall Street don't seem to have an agenda and, uh, and haven't spelled out a coherent list of demands and things. And so it, this is getting to me because a couple of reasons, which we discussed before the, the, this uh, uh, rumble. One is, uh, it's very, it's hilarious that we, you know, that this is coming from the media. Uh, first of all, it's in the nature of being a young person that you haven't formed a coherent world here. So why do we expect them to have one? And they are coming from a place where their culture has a completely incoherent world here. In fact, the salient feature of where we're at right now is that we can't construct a coherent narrative about what's happening to us and what we're going to do about it. And so to expect all those young people to know. But for me, it was summed up in, in the sign that I saw. Uh, uh, in the, it was on a video a few days ago of a young person with a sign that said, $70,000 college debt, $12,000 medical bills, I'm 22, where's my bailout? Okay, so they know what the deal is, and the basic deal is pretty clear. Their, their future has been sold out from under them, so let's not be so hard on them. Okay, I'm going to be whipping through, uh, so trying to lay out some basic ideas here, which we'll elaborate on, and we have to do this rather quickly. The banking system has committed suicide. And uh, this, is, this is going, to, one of the things that I'm thinking lately is that we're seeing a kind of a horse race between different uh, uh, problems that could all put us out of business. And in fact, they're going to mutually reinforce the dangers that they present to us as they do this. And one of them is the failures of capital formation and the management of money and banking. That's in terrible trouble right now. The other one is the resource scarcity issue, which we're doing nothing about but blowing green smoke up our asses. And the third one is, of course, climate change, which is such a large thing and so frightening that nobody can talk about it. But we're not talking about any of these things in a coherent way, and we're not doing anything. Now, the banking system is in the process of committing suicide. And the reason this is important, because the money is going to go away. It's vanishing into a black hole from which it will not emerge. And this was the money that we hoped would be there to construct the new economy that, uh, is going, that will supposedly replace you know, the hard industrial economy, the post-industrial economy, whatever that was supposed to be. That money is not there to do that. And that money is not there to do a lot of the projects connected with it, all of the, a lot of the techno fantasies. The oil situation is for real, despite Daniel Jurgen's uh, uh, public relations campaign last week. Daniel Jurgen, by the way, who was all over the Wall Street Journal, all over Bloomberg, all over the New York Times, all over NPR. Daniel Jurgen is the chief whore, public relations whore for the oil industry. That's who pays his salary. So let's be clear about that. The delusion in a society under stress, the delusional thinking rises in exact proportion. To the, to the stress that's there. So you can only expect our society to get more delusional. And one of the ideas that is now cropping up all over is the idea that the earth is a bonbon with a creamy nougat center of oil. <laughs> this is called the abiotic oil theory. It's not true. I have a special folder for ideas like this. It's labeled complete fucking nonsense. <laughs> so, What's going on now is a great wish. This is we've become a wishful, delusional society, uh, and what we're wishing is that we can run Walt, Walmart, Walt Disney World, the interstate highway system, suburbia, and the U.S. military on some other fuel, on some alternative fuel. And the key to understanding what's going to happen to us is this: uh, uh, we're going to be disappointed by what these things can do for us. Okay. And because of that, we have to make other arrangements for everyday life, which is something we don't want to do. 
the greatest impediment to doing this is the fact that we have poured our national treasure into a living arrangement that has no future. And uh, unfortunately, because we've done that, we are now stuck in what I call the psychology of previous investment. Having made these massive investments in all of the furnishings and accessories of the American dream way of life, we are not willing to even entertain letting go of them or even reforming them. And so what you're seeing all around America, including the White House, is a uh, campaign to sustain the unsustainable. That's the choice that we've made. Um, and by the way, uh, life is tragic. Sometimes societies make bad collective decisions and then they have to live with the consequences of it. And we've made some bad decisions. By the way, nobody's having a better day up there because of what's on the water tower. Okay? <laughs> That's the face of a wrathful God looking down on us saying, you're a wicked people and you're going to be punished. <laughs> so, we're faced with, the, with this task of what, we're gonna, what are we going to do in the face of all this? Uh, and you can, you can describe this with precision. We are going to have to make other arrangements for all of the major systems of everyday life in our society. We're going to have to grow our food differently. We're going to have to... Uh, uh, reform local networks of economic interdependency, namely shopping and commerce that is not big box shopping. We're going to have to do school differently. We're going to have to make a few things in this country again. And we're going to have to inhabit the landscape differently. And that is a huge question. A lot of people think that if suburbia fails, everybody will move to the city. I don't believe that. I think what you're going to see is the, uh, a, a different a different kind of picture. And our cities, I believe, are going to contract, consistent with the fact that we are entering a, an epical, uh, uh, comprehensive contraction of economic activity. Things have to get smaller and finer. We're going to have to do everything on a smaller scale. Uh, uh, there are some places in America where uh, that aren't going to be working too well. Las Vegas, the excitement will be over for everyone but the tarantulas. <laughs> if you have any uh, elderly parents who want to move to Arizona, get down on your hands and knees and beg them to change their mind. That place is not going to make it. Uh, I believe that all of our cities are going to have to contract. They're not going to disappear necessarily. Most of them occupy important sites and there will be important settlements there. But we've, we've made some bad choices, and just as suburbia is extremely problematical, our big cities are going to get into trouble for different reasons. And when you're speaking of New York City in particular, uh, I think we have made a tragic choice in filling up Manhattan Island with skyscrapers. The skyscraper is an obsolete building form. The uh, architecture profession will not tell you that. Um, and uh, I think uh, I will go into detail about that later when the debate starts. Uh, the skyscraper is obsolete for reasons that are not all that apparent. They're not, they may not be the ones you're thinking of. Um, and because of that, we've also, we're, we're going to be leaving <laughs> behind the age of architectural stuntsmanship uh, in which the most important thing is to express the narcissistic uh, 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 feelings of the architects themselves. You know, the, pr the, the main program of architecture at the highest levels for the last 20 years has been to confound the public's expectations about how buildings are going to behave and how the city is going to behave in order to allow the architects to appear to be supernatural beings because nobody else understands what they're doing. So it's all about confusing and confounding people. I think what you're going to see is the action is going to shift to smaller places, small towns, small cities that have been deactivated, that are waiting to be repopulated. And uh, a lot of it is going to have to do with the places that have a meaningful relationship with agriculture. Because we're going to have to grow some of our food closer to home, maybe not all of it. And a lot of these places are sitting there empty, waiting to be reactivated. Uh, we're spending an awful lot of time uh, engaging in, in, in debates and programs for greening up 
America, we're going to discover that it's not about green buildings. It's going to be largely about the disposition of the buildings on the landscape and their relationships with each other and with us and our social program. And uh, I have been associated with the new urbanism movement for 20 years. I still believe that there's some of the brightest people in America doing the most useful things. Um, and the great achievement of the new urbanism was not building those uh, new towns and the green fields uh, out there. The great achievement of the new urbanists was to dive into the trash can of history and retrieve a whole body of principle and skill that three generations of architects, urban planners, and public officials threw away. And they've gotten it back for us. We know how to do this stuff now. This has never been about, we're very confused about a lot of things, but one thing we're confused about is whether this is about style or taste. It's not. It's about principles and standards of excellence, and it's about constructing an agreement about how the human habitat is going to be formed, and how it will behave, and how we will behave within it. <clears throat> and I guess that's I guess that's the end of my spiel. So uh, take it away, uh, Diane or Jim. Or Jim.